All right, so here in this problem, they want to know which equations represent the graph below, and we could plug each of these equations in the calculator and see which one approximates it, but we don't need to go to that extreme here because what they're really asking you about are the roots here. And I know that because the only two features that go to question you on the regents are maximums, like this relative maximum here. It's called a relative maximum uh, because if you notice, this is not the highest point in the graph. The highest point uh, is essentially infinity because it keeps going on later. But it's a maximum in a certain domain. Domain refers to the interval on the x-axis. This is a relative min, right? So they're only going to ask you about relative mins and maxes, like just to identify them. And the points that cross the x-axis, they're called the roots. That's these points right here. In our case, the roots are what are really helpful. And our three roots are negative 2, 0, 1, 0, and 3, 0. And uh, roots are uh, situations where the x's are different numbers, usually. And the outputs are always the same, though the outputs are all 0, 0, and 0. So what numbers can we plug into these equations to get zero? Well, an easy way to figure that out is to, um, uh, you could plug in three and one and negative two as x is here. And you'll see that uh, the only one it works for is choice two. You could plug it in that way, but that's time consuming. What you might also do is factor it out. What do I mean? Well, I know that, um, for example, uh, choice one. Um, I know the, whatever the opposite of two is, x is negative 2, that would give a, a result of 0, and 0 times anything is 0, so I know that could be an answer. So all I have to examine, though, is this quadratic right here, just that one, because I want to figure out what x values would make this thing 0, and if I factor just that piece out, I get x plus 2 times x minus 6, right? 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, and 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4, so this is the factored form. Once I do that, what's the only way, the only x values I can plug into this product to get a result of a zero, well, I could have x equals negative two and x equals three. Now, negative two and three are roots, but notice that uh, at no point did x equal one, which is one of the roots that we need, so choice one is out. Choice three starts to work in the beginning because x minus one would have to equal zero, right? In order for this total product to be zero, as long as one of your factors is zero, the whole product is zero. So if x is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So far, it's good, right? It matches this root right here when x is 1. So we have to focus, though, on this quadratic right here. So when we factor this out, we need to find um, two numbers that multiply negative 6, but add to negative 5. And that's negative 6 and 1. And, right, negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. However, the roots here would be 6 and negative 1. Right? The opposite is essentially of these two numbers. It always works that way. And notice 6 is not one of the roots that we see here, so 3 is not a possibility. So if you get an equation like this and you're trying to match um, the, a question like this and trying to match the graph of the equations, uh, you can focus on key fit things like maximums, minimums, and roots and always figure it out that way. If that doesn't work, feel free to you know, plug these into your calculator. And then when you go, um, I would hit Right? I would hit, like say you had this problem in there, I would hit second graph to see the table. And you can see all the points and see what matches up. You can even change the interval of the points by pressing plus and then whatever interval you want, like twos. If you want the x's to go up by twos or whatever you need to see which points match the points you see on this graph. And you can make an inference that way. All right, hope this helped.